Uh, so my dad always said growing up, the speed of the general is the speed of the troops. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if you're laid back, they'll be laid back. Mm -hmm. Very if, true. If you're satisfied, they'll be satisfied. Yeah. What's up, half centenarians? Today is a wonderful day. It is almost Christmas when we're filming this. And so I was thinking about coming in and buying a car for Christmas. So yeah, I, um, I changed my mind. But we are definitely here with someone who can help you if you decide that you wanna buy a car. And he has so many different models and makes of cars. But I'm gonna let Mr. Moorhead introduce himself to you and then we'll talk more about that and how he got started and all of those wonderful things that we've been talking about before you joined us. Well, thank you, Ms. Spanks. I am uh, really excited to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, some of the episodes that you filmed uh, previously and you've had some phenomenal people uh, on there and uh, it's just really a pleasure to, to be uh, a part of this and thank you for considering me. I am so grateful because not only are they phenomenal, so are you. And just the great things that you and your family are doing. We always talk about legacy here with the Half Centenarian channel. Sure. So this is so nice to actually be able to bring that into the conversation as well because all of this started because of your father and then you came in and you said you grew up with cars. So tell us a little bit about how all of the Sterling, um, I guess the Sterling enterprise got started. Well, started with dad. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. My father was uh, uh, went, his, went to uh, graduate school at the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. So he made his way from Grambling State University, mm -hmm. HBCs, go. Uh, and uh, we have that connection, we obviously. Do. Uh, your dad was also a, a Grambling alum, uh -huh. and, or is a Grambling alum, I That's should right. say. So uh, yeah, it's like we're family already, I right? I know. And uh, after, after Grambling uh, getting his undergraduate, he went to the University of Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where he met my mother. Uh, and then subsequently uh, I was I was born, uh, but uh, he got a master's uh, in social work at the mm -hmm. University of Michigan. Uh, and, he, and he actually went to work for Exxon for a short time mm -hmm. and then Chrysler after graduating. Uh, and then he went back to the University of Michigan uh, okay. and was in education, education very big in, in, in our family, yeah. right? On both sides of my family, just all the way up and down. Of course. Um, so how did your dad, get to a place if you think about he was in education he'd gone to social work i mean got a degree in social work and all that kind of stuff and then he ends up in the automobile industry yeah so we we actually had uh in my neighborhood um uh, a man his name was jim bradley mm -hmm. uh, and his he had two two girls that were a couple years older than me and uh, we went to elementary school together mr bradley was a pontiac GMC dealer mm -hmm. uh, there in, in, in Ann Arbor. Uh, so he was he was a, a pioneer gotcha. uh, as an African-American uh, in the business. And he and my dad got to know each other. And wow. at some point uh, he said, you know, why don't you come talk to me? And, mm -hmm. and so uh, he talked my dad into considering the car business. Wow. And, and, uh, and, and my dad tells this story. He says, when he decided that he was going to get into it, he asked Mr. Bradley, so what management position will I have? And Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bradley told him, uh, you won't. You'll start out selling cars. Right. Uh, and so he started out selling cars. And you are proud to say that you guys are the largest yeah. black owned. Is it just the largest black owned or one of the largest BMW dealerships. We're one of the largest stores in the country. There's okay. about 360 other BMW dealers mm -hmm. uh, in North America, and and we are one of the larger ones. Gotcha. Uh, and and we are the largest African American owned. All right. So not only do you have BMWs, what other um, types do you have? Yeah. So we also have Mini Cooper. BMW decided to bring the Mini Cooper brand back mm -hmm. um, here in the United States. Uh, they awarded franchises to. 75 dealers mm -hmm. and my father was one of them oh nice uh, so my father was there's a book that i read years ago called outliers mm -hmm. I, I, Malcolm and Gladwell. love that book right i love malcolm gladwell go ahead and it just kind of brought everything full circle mm -hmm. for me right in, in my dad's journey because my dad there was a push 
because African Americans uh, spend so much money, mm -hmm. uh, and you know we buy Mercedes and we buy yeah. Porsches yeah. and we buy Audis and 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 Cadillacs mm -hmm. and you know in the what what we say is kind of the the luxury market, mm -hmm. we just didn't have representation oh, no. uh, at mm -hmm. the dealer level, yes. and so there was a push. Uh, actually, it was. Uh, a, a group called NAMAD. They had an organization that really started a push for us to have more representation with the brands that had kind of right. shut us out. So now uh, in 2014, uh, he became the first um, first black man to own, in the world, to own a wow. Rolls Royce franchise. Wow. And then in 2016, he became the first black man in the world to own a Lamborghini franchise. Wow and also a McLaren franchise. Mm -hmm. I actually picked up McLaren and Lamborghini in the same week. Uh, wow. Don't know how he did that. <laughs> but you know what, he's an outlier. He's an outlier, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, he's, he's, he's really set the bar high. He's, he's shattered some, some of those glass mm -hmm. ceilings. Yeah. And, and now he's, and he's a trailblazer. 77 years old and he says, you and know what? <laughs> it's time for me to to enjoy myself and, right. uh, and, 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 and hand the reins over to yeah. you, so. So when you are thinking about what you've done and how you're living right now and where you are, um, how are you living your best life at this juncture in your life? You know, I'm living my best life right now just really focused on the work-life balance mm -hmm. uh, because I really have just really immersed myself in this business from, it seems like forever. I mean, mm -hmm. from the time I was in high school. Right. Uh, and uh, I've really worked hard because my dad always worked so hard. Yeah. You know, all that time that we were coming up, you know, he was in education at Michigan, but, you know, he opened a Creole restaurant mm -hmm. in Ann Arbor and See, had a Creole restaurant for several years. Uh -huh. uh, and he had a couple of partners and right. the business didn't pan out right. the way they hoped. Um, but, you know, he was always doing something. You know, mm -hmm. I remember him bringing, he, he looked at investing in a, in a the flavored popcorn business. Mm -hmm. So he would bring this popcorn home, that was the best. <laughs> right? He'd bring all these different flavors home. And I'm thinking, yeah, we're going into Was that before business. the car? Before Bill cars. Chip? Okay. Before cars. So then I would, I would ask you this. What's one of the coolest things about having a car dealership? Like to have that as part of what you're doing and you love doing it. What's, what's a really good... Just the, just the people. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to to interact with a lot of different people mm -hmm. all day on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, we were, were blessed enough to, uh, here in Virginia at least, be considered a, an, an essential business during mm -hmm. COVID. Oh, wow, uh, okay. So I did not have to sit at home during okay. COVID. Um, it was, you know, we came, I was able to come to work every day. Wow. Uh, which I think really saved my life. I don't know what I would have done because in other just over in Pennsylvania, right. they they shut down the car dealers. Wow. Um, I can't imagine what that would have been like, you know, having yeah. to sit at home and shutter. But that gave you work life balance completely. Yeah. But you know, it uh, it it really now that I'm that now that I'm 50 years old, uh, I I really am focused on my daughter mm -hmm. and making sure that I'm doing all the right things yeah. with her, making sure, you know, financially I have everything in place mm -hmm. for her. Um, you know, she's, she's really the best thing that ever happened to me. Awesome. And, uh, and, and, and so that's how I'm living my best life now. I'm really, I, I find I'm living it for her. Living your best life to get her situated. Living it for her. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. awesome though. So then my last thing is, uh, there, was a, there was a statement that you had when you um, were filling out and we were talking about one of your mottos about um, the general. Can you share that? Yeah. Uh, so my dad always said growing up, the speed of the general is the speed of the troops. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if you're laid back, they'll be laid back. Mm -hmm. Very if, true. If you're satisfied, they'll be satisfied. Yeah. Uh, and boy, my dad was tough. But that's why he has been able to leave such a successful business because he, the speed of the general does determine it the speed it of the absolutely troops. Is. Yeah, it absolutely and is. And the mindset and all of that stuff goes hand in hand. So if you were to go back and have, or if you were to go have dinner tonight, and you can have dinner with anyone, um, you know, three people on a board of directors, living or deceased, who would you have dinner with? Good question. Uh, Andrew Young. 
Mm-hmm. Always admired him. Brilliant man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barack Obama, mm-hmm. another brilliant man. Yes. And uh, a, a, a local person, uh, a young lady, Sheila Johnson. Okay. Yeah, she's she's done some amazing things. She has. And uh, she knows how to get it done and doesn't take no mess. She definitely does. Yeah. Sheila Johnson, that ironically is someone that I have just something in common with. And I'll tell you about that later. I don't want her thinking that I, she's like, who is that person that thinks they know me? But yeah, she's a very, she's a phenomenal, phenomenal person. So I think that- There's a world championship under her belt too. For basketball, right? WNBA. Yes, Yes. WNBA, yes, yes. So I was like, wait a minute, did I miss that one? So all of those people that you talked about, phenomenal people, because you're only as good as your team. That's right. So we all need help to That's get right. to where we're trying to go. So half centenarians, don't forget, if you are living in a silo, we're trying to expose and enlighten all of us with people who are doing great things. So don't forget to like, share, comment, share your half centenarians could be you that are doing great things that are really out here impacting the world because that's what we're here to do don't forget get you one of these a rolls royce nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream so i'm telling you right now if you're dreaming about it come be about it come get it you only have a couple of documents to sign isn't that right come be about it that's what you don't even have to come here we'll send it to you well i like that see that that's a true salesperson right there (laughs) you guys be safe be careful And we will see you soon. Be careful, Atlanta. I'm coming through with a Rolls Royce.